Greetings, friends and colleagues. Sean Elvis. It's good to see you all. <clears throat> Reading from uh, the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 10, verse 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I am, I am come not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come not to set a man at variance against his father. Or excuse me. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be, the, shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that looseth, loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Word of the Lord. You know, I was talking um, to somebody about Jesus uh, the other day. And I was telling them how great Jesus was. And I was giving them the gospel and the good news that, you know, he died for us. And, you know, if you believe on him, you can be saved and go to heaven. That it's not about your good works and how good of a person you are, but what you believe, you know. If you believe on Jesus, if you believe in the Bible, you go to heaven, you know. And I was trying to share with um, this person the good news. And as I was sharing it with them, they, um, they kind of shifted the conversation towards Gandhi and started telling me you know how great Gandhi was and how Gandhi was a great man <laughs> and how he practiced peace and love and nonviolence. you know matter of fact that's exactly what Gandhi was famous for um, preaching peace and harmony and stop the violence and and let's not use any violence anymore peace well, Jesus said, <clears throat> Matthew 10, uh, chapter, chapter 10, verse 34, Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I am come not to send peace, but a sword. You know, many people think that that, that needs to be the goal of mankind, you know, world peace. You know, you look at big, giant organizations like the United Nations. What's their number one goal? world peace <laughs> you know how can we get nations to stop fighting against other nations how can we stop all the violence you know that was set, what 75 years ago almost that the united nations started and began you know their 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 quest for world peace how's that working out for them you know cuz it, it kind of reminds me of the war on drugs you know the, the more you try to stop it the worse it gets, you know? Why is that? Maybe you're doing it the wrong way. Maybe you have the wrong objective. Maybe stopping the violence is shouldn't be your goal, you know? Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. What was he saying? You know, we're going to talk about that in this video, you know? If I was trying to accomplish, you know, something 75 years ago, I'm not even close to that, that old, but if I was, you know, you know, if I didn't see I was getting closer to my goal, but I was getting farther away, I might start to reconsider, you know, my strategy or maybe my goal entirely, right? You know, if you can't realize that we're headed more towards World War Three and more more violence than we are towards world peace. Um, <laughs> friends, you're fast asleep. You're sleeping under a rock. The world's not getting closer to world peace. <laughs> um, far from it. But anyway, Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace but a sword. You know, Jesus came to bring division. You know, as you see, Gandhi... Uh, is famous for quoting um, against Jesus. You know, if you look up the quotes that Gandhi used, he used stuff like, um, 
I like your Christ, but I don't like your Christians, you know. Gandhi wasn't for Christ. He didn't believe on the Lord Jesus. He was a Hindu. You know, Gandhi preached, you know, let's all hold hands and sing Kumbaya. <laughs> Listen, today I want to discuss, you know, why world peace is not only impractical, but why it's unbiblical. You know, in other words, it, it, it's, imp it's impossible. It's not even possible to have world peace. You know, th this message is not to promote violence in any way, shape, or form, um, but just give people a biblical perspective on, you know, why um, nonviolence and, and world peace, you know, what Gandhi preached, should not be our top priority, but rather, you know, we should be more focused on what Jesus taught, you know, to bring division. You know, he wanted to divide those who were for God and those who were against God. Okay? You know, I'm going to start uh, with a story. You know, the other day I was outside um, a neighbor's house of mine. And, you know, they weren't home, but their dog was there. You know, and they had the cutest little dog, man. It was this little white poodle, you know, this harmless little thing. He was so cute. And his, his little tail was wagging a million miles an hour. He was so happy to see me, you know. And he comes running up to me and wants to play with me, you know. And I had never met this dog before, okay? I've never seen this dog. This dog didn't know me. Um, so, you know, <coughs> excuse me. I could see why they um, call dogs man's best friend because it's like this dog didn't even know me. He's coming up to me like he's my best friend, right? Now, I didn't pet the dog or anything like that, you know. I mean, it wasn't my dog, and I wasn't there to see the dog, you know. I was there for other reasons, but anyway... Something hit me at that moment, you know, it hit me and I realized that this dog is just a dog. It's just an animal, you know, it's not a human being, this is not your friend. This animal is not capable of loving you. It's, it's just an animal, it's just reacting how it's programmed to react. It has no, uh, it can't differentiate <laughs> between, you know, um, it's going to act like that towards anybody. You know, there's nothing special about me and why, why he was acting that way. He's just an animal. Not a human being, you know. It, it, is it alive? Yes. Yes, it's alive. But it has no spirit. It has no soul inside of it, you know. Um, and it just made me think of how, you know, some people that I know, you know, that they love dogs, you know. And it's almost like they love dogs more than they love humans, you know. And, and I'm starting to realize that, you know, there's there's a lot of truth to that. You know, people out there who who are animal lovers, who are who are vegans, who are against anything, you know, harm towards animals, don't realize that there's a difference between animals and humans, okay? We are not animals. That's what evolution evolution teaches. Evolution teaches that we're just advanced apes, that we're animals. You know, we're not animals. We're human beings. We have a soul inside of us that separates us from the animals, you know? We didn't evolve from apes, okay? God created us, but that's another message. So this message is not, not, not meant to offend um, animal lovers, you know? But, but if you are one of these animal lovers that I'm talking about, you're probably going to be offended, okay? Because what I'm about to preach um, is either going to offend you, and you're going to hate me, you know, because I'm, I'm preaching this book. Or, you know, it's going to wake you up, and you're going to realize, oh, shh. I'm an error, you know, I need to change the way I think, to change the way I believe, you know. Anyway, so I'm, I'm looking at this dog, this cute little white poodle, you know, and, and I'm thinking to myself, that's it, you know, that, that's it, you know. We, some people, humans, are treating other humans like animals, you know. Now, let me explain. You see, a lion in the jungle is something that most people will stay away from, okay? Um, and, and that'd be a wise decision, you know? <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're not staying away from it necessarily because we hate the lion, you know? But we realize it's dangerous, you know? And it's not gonna... If, we, if we're nice to the lion, he's, he doesn't care. He's still gonna eat us just the same, right? So, so we respect the lion and we say, okay, you're more stronger than us. We're just gonna stay away from you, right? Um... You know, many people I talk to and I ask them, I said, if you could be any animal, what would you be? You know, and, I, and an interesting thing is a lot of people um, tell me 
that they want to be a lion, you know, and, and it's uh, it's not surprising, you know, why they choose that. I mean, the lion's the king of the jungle, you know, it's the roughest and toughest on the block, you know, nobody messes with the lion, right? So, you know, I'm standing there, I'm looking at this poodle, and I'm thinking to myself, nobody wants to be this little dog. Nobody wants to be this this uh, innocent, cute, um, defenseless <laughs> uh, little cute white poodle, right? Because we live in the physical world and, and we judge things and we judge people based on physical strengths and weaknesses, you know. And, and it's like judging a book by its cover, you know. You, you don't judge a book by its cover, you know. We, we tend to um, judge people based on their looks, on their works, on their actions, on their capabilities, on their strengths and their weaknesses, you know. And, we judge people based on the wrong reasons a lot of the time. You know, you're supposed to judge a person on um, how close are they with the Lord Jesus? How good of a person are they? Do they follow the commandments? You know, are they trustworthy? Are they, are they faithful? You know, if, if somebody's poor, we usually don't treat them as good as somebody who's rich. Right? You know, and you know, a lot of guys, you know, they, they look at a young pretty girl and they tend to give her more attention you know more attention than like the older woman who maybe doesn't look as good um but you know humans we're different than animals you know we can consciously make a decision and choose to not judge a book by its cover and, and to treat others the way that we would like to be treated regardless of how they appear or what their appearance is you know and sometimes it takes experience, life experience, and um, to learn these things, and and to learn that you know sometimes the flashiest, uh, best looking person, the richest person, um, the most popular person is oftentimes the worst type of person. You know, they're not all they're cracked up to be. You know, sure the lion looks really nice. You know, he's got a big mane, and he looks beautiful, and he's strong, and he's powerful, and he's got all the females around him right to bring him food but you know the lion he's not going to sacrifice himself you know for you you know he will never choose you above himself he'll always put himself first the lion comes first he's selfish he's an animal okay whatever's best for the lion that's what he's going to do you know you see a human being is the only creature on this planet that will empathize with others that will treat that can treat others um in a loving way um in spite of them treating them badly you know you know uh you see a lot of the times we tr we tend to treat others better who treat us good you know or we treat our friends better and not to say that you shouldn't but you know um th there's a certain dynamic uh that humans you know because we have a soul we empathize that, you know, we can treat somebody good even though that they're bad to us, right? You know, Jesus said to love your enemies and pray for them which persecute you. But, you know, see, there's a difference. There's a difference between weakness and meekness. You know, Jesus wasn't telling us to go out there and be defenseless. He wasn't telling us to go be weak when he said be meek. The meek shall inherit the earth. No. He said in Matthew chapter 10 verse 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. You see, there's two types of animals. There's predators and there's prey. Right? But too many, too many people, too many Christians think that the Christian life is supposed to be a life where you become the prey. Where, you, where you're supposed to be like some pacifist, some, some non-violent person like Gandhi. And just roll over and die. And use no violence at all. Don't even defend yourself. You know, if anybody uh, comes to attack us, we're supposed to just lie down and and um, and pray for them. Uh, um, or run away so we don't get eaten, you know. Listen, that's not what Jesus is teaching at all. That's not who Jesus Christ is. Jesus is not like Gandhi, you know. Jesus came to bring division amongst the predators. Because make no mistake about it, in the animal kingdom, all humans are predators. You know, we are at the top of the food chain for a reason, because we're predators. We ain't prey. You know, the difference is, what type of predator are you? 
What type of predator are you going to be? You know, are you going to be a selfish predator like the lion and just only look after yourself and just seek to dominate the world around you so you can have everything and you can be the king of the jungle? Or are you going to be a predator that's a peacemaker that even though you're strong and you're vicious and you're powerful that you stand for righteousness and you and you do good unto those that try to harm you? You know, the second part of this verse, Matthew chapter 10, 16, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves, says, Be ye therefore wise as serpents, but as harmless as doves. You know, Jesus said, Be ye therefore wise as serpents, and harmless as doves. You know, see, he wants us to be wise as the snake, but as harmless as the dove. He wants us to be as fierce as the wolf in the wolf pack, but as pe as peaceful as a sheep is in the sheep herd. God wants us to be as fearless as the lion, the king of the jungle, but as gentle as a little poodle, the same poodle that I saw in my neighbor's house. You know, you see, Gandhi didn't get it right. You know, he didn't believe in Jesus. He didn't believe in God. He didn't believe in the Bible. You know, he wanted to turn us into prey. He wanted to turn us into sissy, pansy, little weaklings, pacifists, nonviolent people. You know, that's not what Jesus wants. Jesus wants soldiers. Jesus wants you to be a soldier. And a, you know, a, a soldier cannot engage against an enemy if he's not prepared to attack and defend himself. You know, if somebody's coming at you violently, you have to be able to defend yourself with equal force. You know, there's a difference between initiating force and defending yourself with force. You know, when somebody's coming at you, you can defend yourself. You know? Now, I'm not preaching to go out there and badmouth anybody, okay? You know, we shouldn't be going out there rebuking everybody for every little wrong thing that they're doing, okay? You know, Jesus was the most perfect man to walk the earth, and he didn't go out there and highlight everything everybody was doing wrong. He didn't say, hey, you, you're thinking sinful thoughts. Hey, you, stop thinking that. Like, look, he also didn't remain silent, did he? You know, he knew when to speak, and he spoke boldly. With all authority given to him um, from God the Father in heaven. Which is what we need to do when we're preaching this book. It's not our words. It's not under our authority. When we tell somebody they're doing something wrong, it's because we have authority from God from heaven. It's not our authority. We're coming in. You know, <clears throat> but sadly, what, what, do many what do many Christians not do today? You know, well, we don't want to offend anybody, so you know we won't we won't say a thing. We won't say a word. We'll just turn the cheek, turn the other cheek, <laughs> or maybe you know we're outnumbered, you know. So it's better I just keep my mouth shut to keep the peace. Now, I came not to uh, to bring peace, but a sword. That's what Jesus said. I want you to divide those who are with me with those who are against me. You know, sometimes we have to take a stand. You know, we have to draw a line in the sand, a clear line that says, hey, Jesus on this side, non-Jesus people on that other side. And we have to say, hey, look, I'm on this side with Jesus. You're on that side with your father, the devil. And as much as I would love to be with you, I can't cross this line, you know, because I am not leaving Jesus' side for nobody you know, I don't care if you're my father, you're my mother, you're my grandmother. I don't care if you're my only child. My husband, my wife, my girlfriend, my boyfriend. I will love the Lord my God with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. And you know, I love you enough to tell you that you're on the wrong side. You're on the losing side. You know, and I don't say this to offend you. I say this because I love you. You're on the wrong side. And if you're on that side of the line, you're the enemy of Christ. Which means you're my enemy. I want you to be over here, but if you're over there, you're my enemy. I'm sorry. <clears throat> now I'm going to pray for you. 
and I'm going to do good for you because I want you to come over on this side. But don't think for a second that I won't hesitate to cut you down if you try to cross me. If you try to attack me. Don't mistake my kindness for weakness. Just because I'm meek does not mean that I'm weak. You see? I'm meek because I want to show you the... the um. <clears throat> The importance of being on the right side, being on Christ's side, and doing things God's way. I want to show you how a lion can be a sh like a sheep. But don't forget that I'm a lion. And if you attack me, I will defend myself. And you will see how strong I am. You know, Jesus was considered the Lion of Judah. You know, he could have rained down fire from heaven and destroyed... Everybody who was crucifying him at the time, you know, but it wasn't his mission to come here and destroy sinners. You know, he came here to be a living sacrifice, to die for our sins. But no, make no mistake about it. The next time that he comes, the second coming of Christ, when he returns the second time, he's coming to destroy sinners. You know, he's coming with a flaming sword of fire from heaven above. And if you're not, you're not on his side at that in that day, you know, there's no bunker strong enough that's going to save you. There's no nuclear bombs that's going to save you. So I don't care who you are. If you're not on Jesus' side, I ain't with you. You know, and don't get me wrong. You know, I've, I've had to turn people away. You know, I've had to turn people away that I've loved very much in my life. You know, because they didn't want to stand with me on Jesus' side. You know, it's not easy to make that choice. You know, I can see why, you know, they say that the Civil War was the most bloodiest war, the most bloodiest battle of, of all history, you know, and when you have to go against people that you love and you care about, people in your family, you know, that's a tough fight, you know, but, but, but we know that Jesus, he didn't stoop down to the level of animals, you know, you know, when, when somebody's making fun of you and they're bashing you and they're attacking you for your beliefs, they're telling you that what you're teaching is wrong, it's hateful, hate speech or or if you're rebuking somebody for their bad behavior and saying hey that's not the godly way to live your life you should live life this way and they don't want to change you know what they're going to do they're going to attack you they're going to attack you they have no choice because because you're shining the light in their darkness you know, and, and it's our natural instinct to want to fight back against this person who's who's attacking us, right? But but remember, we need to be as wise as serpent, serpents and harmless as doves. You know, because we, we don't know, like, or we, we ought to know that that's exactly what they want us to do. They want us to attack back. They want us to, to attack fire with fire. You know, they don't want us to love our enemies like the Bible teaches because they know if they can get um, into an argument with you, they already won. You know, if they can get you fighting with them and arguing with them. No, I am right. You need to act this way. No. No. That's exactly what they want. If you start arguing with them and you get mad at them and get angry at them, they won. They brought you down from your high ground of being a human being. And they stooped you down to their level of being an animal. Just like Jesus, you know, when they were whipping him and they were beating him and mocking him. What did he do? <laughs> did he start mocking them back and telling them, no, no, you're wrong. No. He didn't have to call out their sins. He knew God's wrath was upon them. And what did he say? He prayed for them. <laughs> he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He didn't become an animal like they did. He didn't treat them like an animal, even though they were treating him like an animal. He knew he was more than an animal. He had a soul, and they had a soul. And he was trying to save their soul. He was trying to get them to repent. You know, just like if somebody's treating you like an animal, it doesn't mean you have to act like one back. You know, in fact, the only way that you're going to get them to repent 
and to stop treating you like an animal and understand that, hey, they have a soul inside of them. They need to act right. They need to act according to God's word. It's to not treat them like they're treating you. You know, you have to treat them respectfully and it's hard when somebody's, when somebody's bashing you to, to love them back. That's hard. I'm not going to sit here and say that I, I can do it all the time. I can't. It's tough. It takes work. You say, Sean, now you sound like you're preaching what Gandhi preached, man. What's the difference? You know, you see, Gandhi wanted all the animals to get along, hold hands and sing Kumbaya, right? He just didn't want the other animals hurting each other, right? But for, first of all, we live in a world where that's never going to happen. Okay, so if if you're being nonviolent to try to bring about world peace, you're in a losing battle to begin with, friend. That's that you know what that's called being a chump. You know, a chump is somebody who doesn't realize who they're dealing with. You know, it, it's somebody who's who's acting like a prey who foolishly thinks that they can convince can convince the predator to not eat them. No. Jesus doesn't want us to be chumps, you know. Carefully calculate what it is you're doing and why you're doing it. Because don't rebuke somebody for the sake of just rebuking somebody, right? There's a chance that they will receive your rebuke and change. So go for it, if that's the case. But, you know, if you know beforehand that if you rebuke them, that they'll just make fun of you, reject you, or attack you, you know, don't waste your breath. Don't cast your pearls before swine. Don't be a chump. Be as wise as a serpent and as harmless as a dove. Know and when to pick your battles. When to t call somebody out. How to call them out. Because, you know, I say it all the time. It's not so much what you say, but how you say it. How you approach somebody. Timing's everything. Second of all, you know, Gandhi thought all religions can just get along. No, they can't. Friends, you know, that's what the Antichrist, that's what the devil wants us to think. That we can all just get together and, and sing Kumbaya. We can't. Jesus came to bring division. You know, because there's rules. There's a way to act and a way not to act. You know, that's why you often hear it said, you know, don't talk about religion or politics if you want to get along with people. You know, because those two topics... They're basically the same topic, you know, but they're only going to divide people. They're going to separate people, which is a good thing. You know, you don't want to be equally yoked up with non-believers. Cut that cancer out of your life. You see, Gandhi, he was trying to do the impossible. He was trying to bring everybody together, non-believers and believers, and say, hey, let's all get along. Hey, predators, become the prey. <laughs> no. Promoting nonviolence? Give me a break. Jesus said in, in, in Luke chapter 22, verse 36, But now, he that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his scrip. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and go buy one. Jesus said, go buy a sword. If you don't have a sword, go get one. You need one. That doesn't sound like somebody who, who's preaching nonviolence. Now, Jesus is not saying to go out there and slay people with your sword, but he's saying, hey, look, I'm, I'm sending you guys out there like sheep among wolves. They're going to try to get you. So you need to be able to defend yourself. Jesus knew that people would try to harm us. You know, look around the world. There's no shortages of shootings inside churches. You know, these churches still don't want to implement safety measures. You know, they don't want to beef up security. You can't just pray that things are going to work out, you know. You have to actually go out there and do something. If you want things done in this world, you have to put your hand to the plow. Get it done. Sure, there are certain things that are out of your control, you know, because, you know, people have free will. You can't pray to God and, and just have God just force somebody to act a certain way or, or do something. You know, they have to use their own free will to choose to do something, you know, like me. If I wanted to be better at preaching, I can't just pray to God and say, God, make me a better preacher, and then not actually practice and try and, you know, put, put my hand to the plow. 
You know, I have to do my part too. I have to read God's word, study it, memorize it, learn it, teach it, and then I'll get better and better. You know, you see, the point of this message today is to show you how world peace is <laughs> it's not possible. You know, just like it's not possible for that little tiny poodle that I saw to love me. It's just an animal. You know, only another human can love you. Only you can love another human. You know, people who have animals have a false sense of, of love. You know, they think, oh, this animal, he loves me. Because I take care of him. I'm a good person. You know what? If you ain't out there taking care of real people and loving real people, <laughs> you're just using that animal as, as, a, as a false sense of security blanket to make yourself feel better. You know, um, we can choose to be either on the Lord's side or not. You know, and, and when you're on the Lord's side, you treat other people like human beings. And you realize you're not going to judge them like you judge animals. You know, just like I saw this pu poodle and I judged this poodle and said, oh, what a cute little thing. Right? No, you're going to go out there and you're going to treat everybody fairly. You're not going to um, treat anybody um, prejudiced. Based on how they look. You're not going to treat them like an animal. You're going to treat them all um, lovingly. Whether they attack you or not. Because they're human beings. They're not animals. You see, if you call somebody out for doing something wrong. And they lash out at you. Give you the silent treatment or whatever. you know, They're treating you like an animal. They're saying, hey, I don't like what you're saying. So I'm going to be mean to you. But this person over here, I like what they're saying. I'm going to be nice to them. That's not what Jesus taught. You know, they're treating you like an animal. Because that's what's in their heart. They don't understand that they are, they do have a soul. They are something special. That's why they're going on treating you like crap. Expressing to you that, hey, I don't think I'm worth anything. So I don't think you're worth anything. So I'm going to treat you worthless like an animal. They're just showing you that they're so filled with pride in their own heart that they think they're better than you. They think I'm a lion, you're a poodle. So you shut up. I'll show you. And you know, if you're nice to them, they're going to take your meekness for weakness. They will. Because you're not attacking back at them and they'll mock you for that too. Because that's how the animal brain thinks, you know. I'm attacking you, so when you don't defend yourself against me, the way that, you know, normal animals do, it's confusing to them. They don't understand it. They're like, wait a second, what? You're supposed to be attacking me back. And it'll perplex them and get them to think, well, why aren't they attacking back at me? You know, that's why they mocked Jesus when he was hanging on the cross. They say, oh, Jesus, you think you're the son of God? Well, then, if you had so much power, then why don't you just come down from that cross and save yourself? See, they took Jesus' meekness for weakness. But he wasn't weak. If he wanted to, he could have instantly called down legions of angels. But he didn't. He was meek, not weak. He just was trying to show them that he, he loved them. You know, but we shouldn't be like Gandhi. You know, Gandhi was just a pacifist out for world peace. He's a chump. You know, if, if, if you're going to be meek, make sure that you don't forget how strong you are. Make sure that you don't forget where your strength comes from. It comes from God. Don't forget how powerful God is. You're not weak when you're kind to your enemies. That's not weakness. That's meekness. And don't try and make this world heaven either. You know, it's not. This world is filled with sin. It's filled with sinners. It's filled with people who are going to attack you. But make sure you draw your line in the sand. And don't cross over for nobody. You know, that doesn't mean we have to go out there and, and, and destroy people who are on the other side. No. But just hold your ground. You know, don't let them pull you to their side. You know, don't let them... Blur the line either. Make sure there's a clear division. And never forget, you know, they may be bigger than you, stronger than you, faster than you, better looking, younger. 
But if you're on God's side, you know, remember God's bigger than them. He's stronger than them, faster than them, than all of them combined. So, anyway, that's my message. You know, hopefully I said something thought-provoking. This is getting up on being 35 minutes. Um, dare I say encouraging? I hope I encourage you. I really do. Um, but just go out there and remember, you know, don't be like Gandhi. If you're going to take a stand for what's right, it's going to be it's going to be a fight. You know, it's going to be a battle, but you know, don't worry. If you're fighting on God's side, you already won. You already won. So don't rub it in anybody's face, you know, be meek. Be meek. Remember, be as bold as a lion because, you know, whatever your enemies throw at you, they will never ever defeat you. It might knock you down. It might hurt you, but it won't defeat you. So hold your head up high, you know, you don't have to be like Gandhi. You don't have to be a weakling. You can choose to be like Jesus, the Lion of Judah. But that Lion wasn't selfish, he was meek. And he showed everybody else that, hey, you're not an animal. You're a human being, you have a soul, you're... You're worthy of love and respect, even if you hurt me or even if you look bad. He didn't treat people like animals. He treated them like human beings, like sons of God, daughters of God. Anyway, that's my message. God bless you all, and I'll be praying for you all. And as, as usual, I'm going to give God the last word here. And I'm going to read from the Old Testament, the book of Second Samuel. Chapter 23, verses 2 through 7. God bless. The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and His word was in my tongue. And the God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me, He that ruleth, o ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. And he shall be as the light of the morning, when the sun riseth, even a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springeth out of the earth by clear shining after rain. Although my house be not so with God, yet he hath made with me an everlasting covenant ordered in all things and, and sure. For this is all my salvation and all my desire, although he make it not to grow. But the sons of Belial shall be all of them as thorns thrust away, because they cannot be taken with hands. But the man that shall touch them must be fenced with iron and the staff of a spear. And they shall be utterly burned with fire in the same place. Word of the Lord. Amen.